Hi, welcome back to our Honors Geometry Series. In this video, we're going to do a couple more examples on coordinate proofs. So in this problem, I'm going to prove that these two triangles are congruent. And I gave myself a hint here. What is point F? How can I show that with coordinates? Well, typically, what you can do if you're proving that a triangle is isosceles or equilateral or that two triangles are congruent, a lot of the time you will use the distance formula. And you can use the distance formula here, um, but it's it's a bit like a sledgehammer. It's effective. It's always going to work, uh, but sometimes it's a bit crude. So in this case, if I did the distance formula for these two segments and these two segments, it's going to be a lot of algebra. It's going to get very messy because of this fraction. What I would rather do And you'll get the same proof either way. You can use distance formula, that's just fine. But a more efficient way, a more elegant way to prove this would be to use the idea that that would be a midpoint. If these triangles are truly congruent, then those segments are congruent. So F would be the midpoint of CG. And those segments are congruent. So F would be the midpoint of DH. I'm going to show, since I don't have to establish any coordinates, my first step would be to show that F is the midpoint of CG and DH. And I can do that with the midpoint formula. I can say, okay, so CG, let's maybe label this. CG, so I'm going to use, let's go A, my, or A plus negative A, right, X2 plus X1 over 2, and then B plus 0 over 2, so that midpoint would be 0, right, 0 over 2 is 0, since these reduce, and then just B over 2 which equals F, because that's what F is, it's zero B over two. And then for DH, it would be, if I switch my coordinates here, DH would be negative A plus A over two, and then B plus zero over two, which would be zero, comma b over 2, which is interesting that that is also f. So it turns out that f really is the midpoint of those two segments. So what can I say now? I can say that since f is the midpoint of those two segments, CG and DH, I can say that CF is congruent to GF and DF is congruent to HF by the definition of midpoint. Because what does a midpoint do? It bisects a segment. So now I can say that these are congruent and these are congruent. But I'm not quite done. I still need something else. And there are a couple more ways that I could go with this proof from step three. I could either do side, side, side and show by the distance formula that both of those segments have a length of B units that could work. Or I could take the easy way out and say that I have a pair of vertical angles here. So angle, what is that? DFC would be congruent to angle HFG because they are vertical angles. And then your last step, 
you've got side angle side congruence. So what you would need to do now for your last step is say that the two triangles are congruent by a side angle side. And our last coordinate proof here, I've got a quadrilateral ABCD with coordinates A, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, so AB, and then 2, 8 is C, and then negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is D. And I want to prove that this is a square. So what is the definition of a square? It's a rhombus with four congruent right angles. So I need to prove two properties. I need to prove all four sides are congruent, and I need to prove that I have four right angles. So what I would need to prove is I would need to show that AB is congruent to, or if I don't use that, if I just go with the measure, AB equals BC equals CD equals DA. And I can do the distance formula to show that. So I should get, you know, if I did AB, what is that? 5 minus 1 squared plus 4 minus 1 squared. gets you the square root of 25, which is just 5. There's AB. And then maybe I'll go with black on this side, BC. So BC, 5, 5 minus 2 squared, plus 4 minus 8 squared. And please don't be fooled by the negatives. So this would be 3 squared plus negative 4 squared. But what happens when you take negative 4 times negative 4? You get the square root of 25 again, which is just 5. So A, B, B, C, and then I could show C, D, and D, A are also 5. So let me just see D, and then show that that equals 5, and DA, I do my distance formula there and show that that also equals 5. So check that off the list, that's done. Then you would need to prove that you have four right angles, and how do I prove that there are four right angles? Well, let's just start with one spot at a time. How do I prove that two segments make a right angle? Or what does it mean to make a right angle? It means they are perpendicular. So how do you prove that two segments in a coordinate plane are perpendicular? I would need to show that AB is perpendicular to BC by showing that they have opposite reciprocal slopes. And you could, on your proof, put all of your pairs here. You could put AB is perpendicular to BC and BC is perpendicular to CD and DC is perpendicular to DA and DA is perpendicular to AB. I just... I put one pair in there just to get us started. And you do your slope formulas, and this one has a slope of 3 over 4, which means this is negative 4 over 3, and this is 3 over 4, and this is negative 4 over 3. But you would still have to say that the four angles... You know, angle A, B, C angle B, C, D 
angle C, D, A, and angle D, A, B are right angles by the definition of right angle. And then you would have four right angles, you'd have all sides are congruent, and then you could say, you know, therefore, ABCD is a square, by definition of square. And then your proof would be done. So those are two quick proofs, examples of our coordinate proofs. Um, I would not expect to see one quite that long and arduous on a quiz or test, but definitely on a homework problem. Let me know what questions you've got, and I will see you soon.